Hey guys, welcome back to my home library where I'm actually doing some work because of course the e-school library, the new one is not open yet. So I've got to work from home. So what we're doing today is we are going to decide is Junior Library Guild worth keeping? So if you don't know, Junior Library Guild is a subscription service that sends you monthly boxes of books to your school library and they will process them for you, have them all, you know, all the stickers on them, all that sort of stuff. Of course, you do have to pay for that a little bit extra and you can subscribe to however many categories you want. Like there's different genres, things like that on there um, and you pay per subscription. You get so many books, like usually one book per month from each one. So I thought it'd be interesting to see. I just, I don't feel like they're getting checked out very much and I wanted to know are the junior library guilds checked out more than the books that I personally pick out? Is it worth keeping? So what I did, okay, I'll show you the website in just a minute. But what I did is I made this little chart and I've got two things down here. I looked at the cost and then I looked at how much they're checked out. Here are the five categories that I subscribe to. Now I didn't used to subscribe to this many. Actually, originally we subscribed to a lot more. We subscribed to like seven categories, I think when I first started this and we paid like $2,000 a year, which is a large chunk of the library budget. So you know, is that really worth it? And I also wanted to know the cost per book. So uh, a couple years ago, I went down to only like three categories. And then I was like, you know what? I have enough money. I'll do five categories. So the past two years, I've subscribed to these five categories, current trends, sci-fi fantasy, high interest, mature, and then these high low books, which a lot of times are paperback is the only bad thing. Oh my gosh, my, <laughs> my fingernail got stuck on my necklace. Anyway, um, here's the cost of each subscription. This is per year and this is how many books you get. This is the only one that has 12 books. Some of them have 14 books per month. So I mean not per month, gosh, 14 books per year. So you get like double a couple months like in the summer and stuff. So here's what that averages out. This is without, is this the processing? This is without the processing, I think, right? Yeah, because I have to pay extra for the processing. This is without the processing is $21 per book, $20 per book, $14.59 per book. Of course, some of those are paperback. So on Amazon, I can get them much cheaper, but I have to do my own processing. So I have more time now. So I'm like, if I have time to process them myself and I have the manpower to do so, I have TAs, student aides that I let do a lot of that. Um, they can even cover the books for me. They do a pretty good job, honestly. I only let certain ones do it because, you know, they got to be well trained. <laughs> but I was looking at the price and that's definitely more than paying uh, for a book on Amazon, which, you know, usually ranges anywhere from 12 to $20 on Amazon, sometimes even for a hardback hardcover. So processing is $136 total for this whole thing, which is $2 per book. And now that I have time to do it, I'm like, do I really need that? I don't know. So that is 23% of my library budget, $1,500 for 68 books. Overall cost per book with the processing is $22.11. That is way more than I'm paying on Amazon. So I don't think it's worth it unless the books are getting checked out like a lot, like if they're picking amazing books. But I will tell you a little trick which is, shh, don't tell anybody, it's a secret, is that, you know, if you subscribe to even one category on Junior Library Guild, you can see all of the possible subscribe, like books that they could send you. So you can see their choices and you can still get all the good recommendations and then you could go buy them on Amazon <laughs> for much cheaper. So you just have to subscribe at least to one category and then you have access to all that. You also have access to all of their sales. Um, somebody asked me in one of my last videos how I got books for $5, not last videos, it was a while back, but they asked me how I got books for $5. They were like, Pay hardback and everything hardcover books and it was because of the junior library guild like five dollar backlist sale and it was books that were several months old but i didn't have them or else i did have them and they were popular and i wanted another copy and i got them for five bucks but that's only because i was a junior library guild member so let's go to my account real quick and just kind of see let me just show you my upcoming shipments so like it'll show you what's coming up this one i have like a lot coming up and i did change some of them but yeah so it'll show you what's coming up and you can swap books so that's what i usually do i'll go to like let's say that i don't think people will like this one let's say <coughs> and the good thing is i don't have to swap it for the same category so this was listed as a high low mature book um, but i can swap it for any category i want so i over here i always click high books i already own and high books and upcoming shipments and then i always click high school and these are the books that I can swap for. And I pretty much every single month at least swap one book, maybe two, because they're just not books that I think that my students will care about. I'm gonna be honest, the sports books, I really, really wanted more sports books. And I almost subscribed to the sports category, but all the sports books are like, they're about like girls or sports that aren't as popular or they're like LGBTQ romances. And that's just not what like all my boys want. And I want the books, the sports books really for the boys, the reluctant, reluctant readers, um, because that's, I, I just don't get enough books for them. And I just know that those aren't the kind of books that they're going to be reading. So, you know, you can click any of these books and it will tell you 
um, a little bit about it here. It'll give you like trigger warnings, basically. It'll give you the information about the book, any reviews that are out there. Um, it'll tell you like right here, any other interesting things about it, graphic novel, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. So, oh yeah. And interest right here. They do have a lot of diversity in their books, which is good. Um, but let's see. So then what I decided to do, hear me out. Maybe this was a little crazy, but I made, I looked at some data. Okay. So I did two things. First, I looked at books from the last couple years. I didn't look at every single book, but I looked at some books from the 2022-23 school year and then books from the 2023-24 school year, but just like some, then I got bored. <laughs> but what I did is I looked at what day we got the book, how many checkouts and like what genre it was. Now, what I have noticed is that fantasy, look, zero, 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 zero. This fantasy did have four because I promoted it. One, one, zero, zero, zero. Fantasy is not getting checked out in my library right now. It's not just the Junior Library Guild books. It's kind of like in general. So I know that's a category I don't really need to subscribe to. Um, graphic novel, this one obviously was a hit because it was Teen Titans. Um, a high-low mystery was checked out a lot. I don't even remember what that is. Creep, a love story. Um, so, but you can see how not frequently these are getting checked out. I mean, not that it's been that long that they've been on the shelf, but still the graphic novel was some romances, some realistic fiction, but it's really hit or miss whether they get checked out or not. Zero, zero, zero. If I'm paying $22 a piece for these books, like I want them to be checked out and I don't want to have to weed them in a few years thinking, oh yeah, that one wasn't ever checked out. That's just a huge waste of money. Now, in their defense, um, I did these, this one, this one, this one, and this one I might have chosen myself anyway because I thought they looked really good for our library. So, you know, they were popular, like three, four, three, in, in you know, this is just in one year. That's how many times they were checked out. Um, so I need to definitely make sure I do order more graphic novels uh, just in general because that is our, by far, our number one uh, checkout category genre. So yes. Now, then what I did is I looked at that same time frame Actually, no, I didn't. It was a little bit later. It was 523. So like right in here between these two dates, I ordered a bunch of books myself and I chose these personally. Here's my book choices. And here's how many times that they got checked out. So am I better at choosing books for my library than Junior Library Guild is? Let's see. Three, five, seven, three, three, two, five. And it's not that I promoted these any heavier than any of the other ones. I don't think... I don't think I promoted... I think I promoted this one a little bit. The Kaiju Preservation Society... Um, other than that, not too much. So yeah, uh, three, two, one, six, three. Here's, here was a zero, a chef's kiss one. Uh, that's it. That's the only one that was zero checkouts. So just going to say, I feel like I did a better job at picking the books for my library than junior library guilt did, <laughs> but that's only because I know my patrons, right? So what this tells me is that I need to not have as many categories for junior library guild. Not that they're not good. And yes, they are like vetted and they're like the highly reviewed ones and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but they're just not the books apparently that my students want. I'm better at choosing the books for my students. Like as, I mean, I have the data now to support that versus these numbers over here. And yes, there are some that did really, really well. So since there are only a few that did really well, and obviously this is not much data to go on. I just, like I said, I got kind of bored of doing this. So <laughs> I stopped. But I think what I need to do is go down to maybe two categories, especially because what I didn't show you is how much more expensive, did I show you? Right here. How much more expensive went up 250. Okay. So these categories that were $300 this year were only $250 last year, $50 in one year that they went up. That's a lot. So they are going up in price. That's quite expensive. And what I'm thinking is to keep two. I'm thinking to keep the high interest high plus and mystery high plus. Mystery is always huge. And I would pretty much order all the mystery books that they send me anyway. And then the high interest high plus are things like what's high interest high plus. Uh, does it tell? Oh, I didn't actually label which, how do I know that I want high interest, high plus? Well, there's a way on here somewhere where you can see, hmm, is there a way to see my categories and what books are in that category? Oh, the other bad thing about Junior Library Guild is, oh my gosh, the loading time on this is so slow. Right now it's doing a lot better, <laughs> honestly. Let's see, but it has been pretty bad. A high interest, high plus. How do I see? So yeah, here are my categories. Here's the total, all that good stuff. Where's high interest, high plus? Okay, the only way I can figure out to see the specific category is I went to like swap a book. I pretended like I'm swapping a book and right here it says name. So I'm gonna put high interest, high plus. We'll see if that does it. No. 
Hmm. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how to see what's in high interest, high plus. Um, can you not just sort by like the category? Here's books that are in my library. Well, I'm sure there probably is a way and I just don't know how, but maybe not. Maybe there's not a way to see what's in high interest, high plus. Okay, well, that's kind of annoying. Also, sales representatives. There's a different one every year, but that is not unique to, to Junior Library Guild. Follett, I feel like there's a different rep every year. Um, I will say Mackin though. Mackin, I've had the same rep the entire time, which has been awesome because like, I feel like he even knows who I am, <laughs> but I've never talked to this person in my life. I don't even know who they are. And, or maybe I did once. I don't know. But I've, it's literally a different person every single year. So that's kind of bad as well. But yeah, I'm going to, oh, maybe you can see the categories here. <gasps> Wait, maybe it's because I don't need to be on my stuff. Maybe I go to high school. <gasps> oh, oh, look at that. Here they are. Sports high, mystery high plus, history. What I say? High interest high plus, which is actually technically grades 10 through 12. <gasps> oh, recent selections in that category. Look at that. And of course, some are mysteries as well. I know I am subscribed to the mystery category too, but like this will be popular. This one will be popular. That one may be popular. Getaway list. I'm pretty sure some people check that out. Lynn Painter, super popular. So, oh, view all titles in this category. Look at that. You can see the books. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. So you can kind of scroll through and see. And of course, once again, you can swap any of them. So at least there's that. And then I also said I was going to keep, oh, mystery high plus. So if I keep mystery high plus as well, what is the difference? It, like, it really doesn't even matter because I can swap them anyway. I keep saying that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, these will be decently popular. I don't think those are our most popular books. But it doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I mean, these are pretty popular. So, okay. Okay, which means next year, if I kept those two categories, I'd be paying $587 for 28 books plus processing equals oh the processing is fifty six dollars okay so the total will be six hundred forty three dollars and right now i pay fifteen hundred so i would be saving eight hundred fifty nine dollars which oh my gosh if i save eight hundred fifty nine dollars look at how many more books i can buy on amazon and just do the processing myself in fact eight hundred fifty nine dollars would get me let's do a little math here let's say they are about 15 per book on amazon somewhere around 57 books and if i did it with junior library guild i would have $22 a book, 39 books. So I could get like 18 more books basically and have to process them myself, but you know, and have possibly books that are ch more frequently checked out. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, we know for sure we're not going to keep the fantasy. I'm not going to keep the high low because some of them are paperback. So the high trends, high plus, was that a good one? Um, high trends, high plus. Let's just check that really quickly. And then I think we will be done. The sports high, like I said, is not quite the sports books I want. Here it is. Current Trends High Plus. There's also the graphic novels, but I can just see what they are and order them myself because sometimes they're in paperback too. Recent selections. Okay, so are these current trends could be, they could even be fantasy, which is what we don't want. A lot of them are or sci-fi or sequels. I mean, Ruthless Vows obviously super popular because Divine Rivals everybody loved. Place for Vanishing Aiden Frey stat. People will like that because it's horror. Um... I like how it tells you the cost of the book too. That's cool. What the River Knows was not, that was fantasy. I tried that one. I DNF'd it. <laughs> um, yeah. Masters of Death, which I love, but I don't think kids will because it's more, it's even more like adult. Yeah. I don't think this is the best category because I don't think these were super popular books. A lot of fantasy. So I know it says current trends, but they are not current trends in my library when I look at the stats. So Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this was somewhat interesting to you. Um, I definitely still recommend Junior Library Guild because I think it's awesome if you don't have time to process the books yourself or if you, even if you do have time, just to go ahead and be able to see what other books they are adding in other categories. Just subscribe to at least one category and you can see all of them. And then you can still swap out books at any time, which is super helpful. So I think I'm going to still keep it, but we're going down to just two categories next year, high interest, high plus and mystery high plus and swapping as needed and only paying $643 instead of $1,500, 23% of my library budget. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this was interesting and I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye.